Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, first, we wanted to start off by talking about the Microsoft GP uh, roadmap. So I know that there's a lot of information swirling around on the internet um, these days about, you know, Microsoft uh, GP is dead and, and so on. But um, Microsoft continues to invest in GP and will continue to put out updates, um, you know, for the next several years, you know, at least. So what they're moving to, though, is instead of, so GP 2018 was the latest version. Um, now they're just going to call it GP Next. So they're not going to have a year associated with the, um, you know, with the next update. And um, so they're still adding new features to GP. Um, if you ever go on to the Microsoft website and put in um, ideas for enhancements to GP, they actually look at those and sometimes incorporate them into the next release. So um, there is a GP Next out, I believe, already. Um, so GP 2018, and now there is a GP Next version. Um, some of the other features you'll see in GP 2018 and GP Next are there is a bridge between GP and BC. It is called the Intelligent Edge. And so that actually kind of gives you a window into um, what some of your data and reports may look like in the BC environment. Good morning, everyone. This is Jeremy. As a kind of a segue to Diane's topic on Dynamics GP, one of the things that we're hearing from a lot of existing customers as well as prospects is what this really means from an architecture or configuration perspective. And very often uh, folks have questions on what's the difference between a multi-tenant cloud versus on-premise? Uh, what does that mean for my business? Are there benefits, pros or cons uh, to each one? I should preface it by saying that Dynamics 365 Business Central does offer, Microsoft does offer an on-premise version of Business Central, similar to GP. Although I think it's safe to say that Microsoft is really pushing a lot of customers and prospects to a cloud-based uh, solution, which is typically priced out at a per member per month versus the traditional software licensing uh, where you used to purchase a you know a license per user, a one-time charge plus your annual annual support. So what are the things that you might consider or look at when you're thinking about a migration from GP to BC? Really is just that, a potential move from an on-premise solution to something that's cloud-based. One of the things that we hear a lot from existing customers and, and prospects is once you move to the cloud, you're actually removing not only the expense but also the liability or exposure of an on-premise uh, installation. Obviously, a lot of us have probably heard many stories about data breaches and security concerns about make, make, making sure your data and your servers are, are maintained. One of the great things about a transition to a Microsoft Cloud, especially since Azure is the world's leading cloud solution, uh, you are guaranteed that your data is going to be secure and safe in the cloud while really removing the expense and liability of, of maintaining a lot of complicated servers and hardware uh, within your actual physical office structure. As we touched on, you know, Microsoft Azure, it is a top leading cloud solution. Uh, it's actually number one in the market right now over, over the competition. So that's another reason to not only consider moving to the cloud, but also moving to the cloud with a Microsoft solution. The other interesting thing about multi-tenant versus on-prem is the fact that your annual maintenance is actually baked in to your monthly subscription charge. So for those of you that are currently running GP on-premise and used to having the annual support contract that renews on a, on a yearly basis, when you look to a cloud subscription uh, change, that's actually included in your monthly charges. So additional releases, R&D efforts, all the bells and whistles that come with future releases, those are all included as part of your monthly charge, which is pretty nice to have. Uh, the other thing is in today's modern day workplace, I should say, where folks are taking work with them on the go or needing access to their data real time, of course, there's a lot of VPN connections and different things that you can use today to access your data. But moving to a cloud-based subscription or a multi-tenant cloud allows you to get access to not only your systems and your data wherever you are. So, uh, for example, with Business Central, there's actually an, an app for that, if you will. So whether you use an uh, iPhone or a Droid, there are applications that can be downloaded to your mobile device, to your tablet, that allows you to get to your data wherever you are 
uh, not even necessarily an internet connection, as long as you have a data plan, uh, you can get to the hyperlink because your data and your, your processing is all in the cloud. You're able to take that on the go with you wherever you need it. One of the cool features about Business Central as well, when you're looking at a potential migration from GP, uh, Microsoft spent a ton of money in R&D as well as usability to make sure that it, it represented the look and feel of, of Office 365, as well as some integration points, which we'll see on the next slide as well with the current Microsoft infra infrastructure stack. So from a usability and adoptability perspective, a lot of times the concern is if you've been using the software for a long time and you move to something new, is it going to uh, impact your productivity? Is there going to be some adoption issues because the users won't understand how the screens flow? One of the uh, benefits of, of having Microsoft incorporate the look and feel of Office 365 is that if any of you have used any other Office 365 products in the past, uh, you'll find a look and feel and the navigation, the hyperlinks, uh, everything's going to be very, very familiar which obviously allows it uh, allows a, a, a minimal time for implementation, but gets the users up and running very quickly. Obviously, driving quicker adoption uh, for the users is important anytime you're looking to migrate or convert systems. But it, you also aren't, aren't sacrificing any uh, security benefits, so you still have the ability to have user-specific roles where maybe certain screens are only available for certain user types. Uh, you're also able to personalize those needs, you know, those screens and notifications, uh, depending on what it is you want those users to actually see. One of the cool features, as, as in addition to moving to the cloud, we already talked about moving from the physical servers into a cloud-based subscription, but the interface or the interaction with other Microsoft, Microsoft technology, including Office 365, uh, at least I'm hearing a lot from customers and prospects that that's that's a big win. So imagine being able to work primarily from your inbox. If you have a customer that sends you a request for a quote, you've got a customer that sends you a request about a specific invoice. Uh, because it's integrated as part of the Microsoft stack, you're able to fully integrate Dynamics 365 cloud-based solution with your Office 365. So within one screen, you're able to manage your day-to-day -day business processes without having to ta uh, toggle back and forth between multiple applications. Uh, that's real-time online real-time access to your data from Microsoft Outlook. You can also uh, implement the deployment of Microsoft Excel, Word, any other Office 365 applications that you use today. Because you're looking to a more cloud-based subscription service, uh, you're able to leverage those other Microsoft Office applications to create customized documents. If you want to uh, make professional-looking invoices, really able to leverage the full suite of products that Microsoft uh, has to offer. We hit on this a little bit, but I think one of the key benefits of moving your data to a multi-tenant cloud configuration is being able to take it with you on the go. So as I've already kind of hinted at earlier, whether you have an iPhone or an Android or use your iPad, uh, there's actually an application for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central that you can download to any device. As long as you have a connection, whether it's the internet or data plan, you're able to get to your data whenever and wherever you are as long as you have that application downloaded, since it is in the cloud, as long as you access it through the link. Of course, you sign on with your user credentials that you typically would. But once you sign on, you're able to see uh, all your information presented to you wherever, wherever you need it. Another key topic about moving to a multi-tenant cloud solution versus an on-prem has to do around pricing. We already hit a little bit on the actual cost of the physical servers that your businesses may be required to maintain for on-prem installations. As part of this move to a cloud-based solution, you're really looking at a monthly per user charge, uh, depending on the makeup of your current business process, process users. So the screen that you're seeing now is actually a breakdown of how that pricing is deployed from a business central perspective. You'll see that there's really two levels of subscription service offered through Business Central. There's something which is called Essentials, which is currently priced out at $70 per user per month, versus a premium subscription, which is currently priced at $100 per user per month. I think the great thing about this is you'll see that with the Essentials license, license you actually get about, I'd say, 90% of the functionality of an ERP solution as part of the Essentials package. If you have manufacturing or expanded service management, you can deploy the premium subscription, which includes everything that Essentials covers, as well as those features and functions that are included in the premium subscription. 
I do get asked a lot by customers and prospects if you can mix and match those. Uh, and so the answer is, is no. So as an organization, Turnkey could help you evaluate your business needs to determine whether essentials or premium was the best fit for you. But it's, it's typically one, uh, one or the other. However, they do have a third type of license, which is called a team member, which is priced out at $8 per user per month. This is a user that may need read, write, approval access uh, for certain key business processes, but they're not in there doing the day-to-day doing the -day fi financial management, posting of transactions, uh, doing the day-to-day -day back office administration of the business. So what this benefit is, it allows us to work with your organization to determine uh, out of your staff who really is a full user versus how many are there that are team members. And as you can, are probably doing the math in your head, uh, you can see it's actually a pretty affordable, affordable solution uh, to get your business users migrated to a cloud-based solution. So I'm going to turn it back over to Diane uh, to talk a little bit about the GP to BC migration. Yep. So um, within BC, there are migration tools to take your GP data and um, automatically pull it in to BC. So versions of GP that are able to um, migrate over GP 2015, 2016, and 2018 on the latest builds. Um, if you're coming off of a different system or you prefer, even if you are coming off of GP and transitioning to BC, there are also Excel um, worksheets that we can export out templates and you can fill them in or we can pull the data out of GP and then, you know, you can clean it up in Excel if you want and then we import it in. So there's two ways to get your data moved from GP to BC. Um, Items that will transfer over, GL accounts and GL balances. So um, it is like a journal entry per month. We don't bring in the GL detail, but it's summarized information per month. So you can run <coughs> historical, you know, year-over-year -year, uh, financial reports. Also, with GL accounts, you have two options. You can bring in your existing chart of accounts, or we can uh, create and bring in, obviously, a new chart of accounts. Um, then there would be, obviously, a mapping exercise. Other information we can bring in, customers and open receivable transactions, vendors and open payable transactions, and then items and quantities on hand. So that's um, what the migration looks like in a nutshell. So a few key functionality differences between um, GP and BC. Right now, payroll is only available um, in GP. There is not a payroll module in BC. So if you are using the payroll module in GP, um, we would suggest not migrating to BC at this point, holding off. Um, BC, one of the other stark differences is BC uses um, account dimensions. So instead of a full account string, it's dimensions. Um, so it gives you different dimension-based reporting. And then again, and Jeremy talked about this um, a lot, the licensing, GP on-prem or hosted versus uh, Business Central is, is cloud-based um, typically. A few other minor differences, uh, terminology, and navigation. So obviously, um, windows and screens in BC are, are referred to as different things um, than in GP. And obviously, navigation is going to be a little bit different. But that's it. OK. So thank you both for presenting for us. Um, that was kind of a brief look at Business Central and what the difference is between um, GP and BC. Uh, what that migration path might look like. But if you have further questions, it all kind of revolves around your specific goals and your specific business scenarios. So um, we'd be happy to help assess whether or not Business Central is the uh, best fit for your organization. Or if you're looking at migrating off Dynamics GP, um, what other solution might be the best fit for you. So um, we do want to make everybody aware that we offer uh, complimentary ERP fit gap assessments. This is where you can sit down with one of our consultants and within one hour, 
we can really dig into your short-term and long-term goals and kind of validate quickly whether Microsoft Dynamics 365 is going to meet those or not. Um, so it's no charge, no obligation assessment, um, really no harm in doing it whatsoever. You get a better idea of whether or not Business Central will be a fit for you, um, as well as just where to take your research in the next uh, in the next direction or next phase of your research. So please do feel free to sign up for this. We'd be happy to help you guys evaluate your next solution if you're looking at migrating off GP. And if you have any questions that we didn't answer today or anything that we weren't able to get to, um, please feel free to reach out.